Hi, dear viewers. Today, I'm joining a conversation with author David Paul. It's a pleasure to have hey. David on the show. Welcome on the show, David. Thank you, Peter. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on Pinglish Literature. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know, David, tell us about your book, Duma Sotra. How does this book come about? I mean, what inspired you to write this book? Okay, well, it's, it's best described as magical realism. Oh. It deals with sexuality, spirituality, and creativity. It starts off in a normal world, which gradually gets stranger. I was on a family Christmas holiday in Bugambia in 2001. Okay. I had to one of the hotel staff where I could try some palm wine. He told me there's a palm tapper just living over the wall. <laughs> when this man stepped out of this small jungle, I was stunned. He was dressed in rags and well, with his Rastafarian uh, dreadlocks, he looked as if he was seven feet tall. But his beaming smile was full of childish delight. And I knew this man would change my life. For the next 13 years on and off, we traveled around West Africa together. And he was the inspiration for my character, Remus Jallo. Now, in the summer of 2003, I was in Kushka, in Rajasthan, in India. And I came across a sadhu, you know, a holy man, who could have been the identical twin, my friend Remus, sticking in his fiction with me complete with the dreads, dreadlocks and smoking the Gambia. I asked myself, what would happen if a Gambian wrestler was mistaken for Indian sadly? And this was the first seed sown for the novel of a period of Dam Dhamma Sutra. That's great. That, that's quite fascinating to know. It's quite fascinating to know about that. And I'm quite enthralled when I heard you talk about Rastafaria and your stay in Gambia and some other parts of West Africa, including the Asia you said you travel to. That sounds very great. Now, David, for readers like me who haven't read the book yet, without giving much information away, could we have a sneak of what we'd expect picking up Dharma Sutra? Dharma Sutra is a spiritual and erotic journey that oh. takes you to some of the world's most exotic locations as Jeffrey Dharma searches for love and a new direction to his life. The journey mirrors my own travels from being a voluntary graphic designer in the Tibetan refugee community in Dharamsala to being given permission to be happy in a small Hindu beach temple in Puri, India. Now, running along Jeff's side, uh, Jeffrey's tent, we follow his estranged uh, wife, Syl Sylvia. She's, uh, she's decided to move to the Gambia. She bought herself a small hotel and began a relationship with Remus. Now, Remus is in the pay of a wealthy Canadian Gambian dealer, a dealer in people as well as cocaine. He's building a casino, which is next door to Sylvia's hotel, and he'd like to acquire it and convert it into a discreet high-class brothel. Hmm. Wow. He thinks his wealth can, can buy him anything. But Sylvia refuses to sell and publicly humiliates him. This is the beginning of a bitter land war between them. But the villain, Bob Jatter, wants to resolve it quickly. He tells Remus that he should go to India, as he knows Jeffrey's there, to divorce and ask Jeffrey for a divorce and come back and marry her. That way, Remus can acquire half share in the hotel, which he can sell to Bob. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, Bob, Bob gives Remus an international bank account and a false passport, which does take Remus to India, but he goes off on his own hedonistic journey. So Bob hires a Botswana assassin, Malefi Bakaketsu, to arrange a fatal accident for Mrs. Dharma. Oh, wow. Unfortunately for Bob, Malefi falls in love with Sylvia and helps her confront Jatter. The Gambian story ends in a bloody confrontation and tragedy. Oh, well, I am I'm quite enthralled that there is a bit of Africa being expanded in your book. That sounds quite amazing to me, because I love novels that has a touch of Africa in it. And thank you so much for adding that. 
Now, David, as authors, you know, we all have different ways of reacting to feedbacks and criticism of our books. I want to ask you, how do you react to negative criticism of your book in time past if you've ever had one? I've been very lucky. The nearest I've had to negative criticism is stony silence from friends who read the novel and were probably shocked by its sexual honesty. I I hate that. (laughs) You know, tell me. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, so I had, um, oh, there was one remark which really made me laugh. I I I recently had one of my book ads up from someone who had no intention of reading either novel, but it oh. made me laugh out loud. He said, Sounds ghastly. Give him the big miss. Oh. <laughs> oh the context is so British. You know. Oh. <laughs> I must, but I've got to confess, oh, I get a bit of enjoyment of setting British middle class values. Yeah. But oh, I've I been mean, looking. Well, I have this very supportive uh, quote according to them, from uh, author Maz Riley. It was very welcome. And she said, not really my sort of genre. Oh. <laughs> but, there, but there are some who do like this sort of stuff. I also admire your strength in putting this genre out for those people. Good luck, David. You're a good writer. So they are open-minded. Because the genre she's talking about is the magical uh, realism. Unfortunately, the publisher of Dharma Sutra did not have that classification, so it went out as erotica. Uh, and my son pointed out that uh, it, it's an honest novel about sex, but it's not titillation. You know? And I, it's frank, but it, it's not what you describe as erotica. That's yep. great. Um, <laughs> that's great. That, that's quite fun and great to know. Most people have really enjoyed it. So. That's amazing. Now, David, I also see that your book, Transfiguration of Jeffrey Droma, you know, talks about demonic possessions and extra travel. I don't know if I'm correct about that, right? Without giving much information away, could you tell us about the making of the Transfiguration of Jeffrey Droma? Okay. Well, the book is set several years on from uh, the first novel. If you have uh, a copy there with you, can you show it to us, to the audience? Uh, to I, the I only have uh, this uh, author's copy from, uh, it's been published by Amazon KDP. Oh, okay. That's great. Yeah, because I'm, I'm living in Thailand. And oh. Everything gets lost here yeah, because what? If a postman <laughs> don't read English, so Hans is not likely to uh, a Thai uh, address label for me. Anyway, so the um, again we're back in Africa. So a young yeah. African boy is possessed by an ancient evil spirit, which takes on the form of a hyena weir beast. Oh, the demonic possession is an ongoing theme in this novel. Even the villain is possessed by two other age old spirits. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, Robert Clark says, Well, I can't keep up with who's possessing who, <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. And so, um, yeah, now Jeffrey and Remus have joined together with Shizuku Ishigo, a former Japanese adult video star. The three have become avatars for the Jagannath Trinity who represent the three races of uh, humankind, portrayed by their, their multi little statues as being black, white, and yellow. Of course, life's more complicated than that. But Jag- Jagannath you know, religion, which is embraced by the Christian movement, uh, <laughs> stripped it down to that. <laughs> okay, so the three of them need to find their own spirit beasts to confront this hyena demon. They travel to the Amazon basin and partake in a five day ayahuasca ceremony to be able to look deeply into themselves. Five years ago, my son and I traveled to Peruvian Amazon and took part in one of these ceremonies. And I can tell you, it was a life enhancing experience and proved to us both this is proof that the spirit world truly exists. Uh, 
one night we even shared the same vision, which I, I would have thought was impossible. I describe how that happens in the book, the other reader. Uh, you know, the Transfiguration is more of a fantasy novel, but it's still grounded in my own life experiences, both uh, spiritual and transcendental. Hmm. There's a lot of otherworldly action. As our chair will become part of the coalition to defeat this evil entity, entity who's affecting all of existence. Uh, these include uh, the one time mercenary from Dharma Sutra, Malefi Bankuketsi, and a group of powerful uh, deities and demigods. Uh, these heavenly beings include the goddess Kali, Isa Krishna, and his celestial brother, Sananda Emmanuel, who have both played the part of Yeshua of Nazareth. It's, uh, That's great. If, if, if Isa, Isa appears in the first book, he's, he's living on the beach in Burry. He's given up any responsibility. He's a um, an incarnation of Krishna, uh, Krishna, because in Puri is actually, actually pronounced Krishna, and people believe locally that that's where the name Christ came from. Oh, so possibly. You know, Jesus was an incarnation of Krishna. <laughs> anyway, the evil entity is exposed as a forgotten Hindu god, Kratu, who forms mm -hmm. his own coalition of devils. Uh, among them are Niccolo Machiavelli, still living about, <laughs> the Comte de Saint, uh, Saint Germain, and the leaders of two uh, bands of fallen angels, uh, Lord Ashta and Hatun Christ Michael. Now, these two have been fighting amongst themselves for several years, oh, for several, for eternity, probably. But they're prepared to join uh, Kratu at a price. They want a deal. Yeah, if any readers like the early novels of Michael Moorcock, they, they will enjoy this transcendental <laughs> Wow. That's quite great. That's quite fascinating to hear. You know, I'm also a lover of spirituality. And even when we had some message in time parks, I was like able to say, I love spirituality. I love books that talks about these themes and subjects and concept. Now, um, David, I'm curious to know if you experienced any challenges while writing your book. If there's any, could you share with us what challenge it is and how you were able to overcome it? I've been very lucky. I had no blocks at all. As the novel was written as a stream of consciousness. Uh, see, both no uh, novels use different narrators. Uh, I become those narrators. You know, I, I, I do believe myself, but while, while I'm, uh, you know, when I'm playing these parts, I explain in the first novel that it's possible to release your creative energy from the second yoga chakra, the sacra, and uh, just above the growing. And direct it to the third eye, Ashna chapter, and from there to the keyboard. Mm. So, and being fed. Um, it, it, in other words, I'm looking at, at, the, uh, key, at, at the screen with my third eye. It's a very tiring process. And I can only maintain it for about 90 minutes before a sense of vertigo eventually. And, I thought, oh. and I'm out, yeah, I'm back again, but that's fine. Now, if you're asking, how can one enter this complicated state of being? Well, the answer is very simple. The second chakra, the second, is also where one's sex drive comes from. Oh. Sex being a human's ultimate act of creation. You, you, if you maintain a balanced and active sex life, <laughs> your life of creativity will flow. Don't stifle it. Let's go for it, man. You know, it's taken me years, years to realize that. So, oh, wow. you know, especially brought up as a fundamental Christian, I have to shake all that stuff off, just enjoying it. Oh, wow. Yeah, superhuman uh, orgasm releases massive amounts of DMT from this pineal gland. It's, uh, you know, if people talk about the white light. Near death experiences. That's just a hit of DMT, man. Uh, yeah, you learn how to harness this, and your imagination will flow freely. Promise you. 
Oh wow. That's great. David, also I want to ask you, apart from Duma Sutra and the transfiguration of Jeffrey Duma, do you have other works you are currently working on? I don't know, I'm just well, curious. Yeah. I've already written two further Jeffrey Dharma novels. Oh. Jeffrey Dharma Zodiac Man, which will be available as an ebook on Smashwords in a few weeks now. Um, and the, the paperback should be out in June and July. That's simply because um, oh, wow. yeah, I have to have um, I have to see the proof copy um, mm. yeah, a bit before I give my go ahead for printing it. Because as with this one, all uh, I, I could talk about it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I'll be going back to, to my home in Wales and have the copy, the proof copy delivered there. I okay it, and it'll be on sale in the next few days. Um, yeah, the fourth uh, Jeffrey Garvel novel is called The One Thousand Names of God, and it's finished, but it's not yet formatted. So maybe next year. That's quite great to know. And I hope it goes fine. And I also look forward to exploring that too when it's finally home. Now, David, could you tell us what publishing is like for a published author like you? What are the challenges encountered in terms of marketing your books? And what are the mediums you've utilized so far in promoting the Sultra and Transfiguration of Jeffrey Duma? Duma Sutra was published by Austin McCauley whose editors were amazing. Oh, I learned a lot of a book formatting from them, and they even put in some useful suggestions in layout and stuff. But, oh, the <laughs> marketing, not existing. <laughs> oh, oh I, I, felt so, <laughs> I felt so cheated. But, what, but one reason I, I signed with them was they promised that my book would be represented all the, the world's major book fairs. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> they would charge me 400 US dollars to have one copy of my book displayed at one show. I wasn't even allowed in. So I got one, I paid 400 dollars to have my book put on a shelf. Ah, uh, no, I said, ne never again. You know, that, that was, I felt quite cheated, yeah. I mean, I, I get offers almost every day from people who promise to make me a new New York Times bestseller. I, I tried one of these, giving them fifteen dollars for for being listed, and I never heard from them again. You know. Now uh, I use Twitter and Instagram, but I, I only get uh, responses from Facebook. I've joined one hundred and sixty Facebook groups. I post a new book, book at it you know, once a week. Uh, it's, it's a very time-consuming process, as you probably know yourself. But I've met a lot of author friends on Facebook, and they've been very supportive in sharing my book ads. <laughs> that helps a heck of a lot. It's an established author really promoting your book. Oh, that's, yeah. so, that's great. Mm. I was, uh, yeah. I realize it can be very hard when it comes to marketing. It, it's a lot of work. Now, David, I just want to ask you, is there anything that you would love the viewers to know about your board books that we couldn't mention in this interview and you'd just love the viewers to know? Well, I spent most of my career as a comic book artist. So I've always been a storyteller, albeit in pictures. I once drew Neil Gaiman's Shadow Death miniseries. So if you enjoyed Neil's novel, American Gods, you will love the Dharma series, I wish you. And so, yeah, but uh, I, I get more satisfaction out of, of, of writing, and I'm more in control. Oh. Uh, yeah. Comics, I was working to other people's scripts most of, most of the time. Oh. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but <laughs> I, I lost a lot of comic book friends. <laughs> they would love for you to go back and forth. That's oh, like, wow. not it's, it's just too too tiring. Six days a week. Oh. Now I work to my normal deadlines. Oh. <laughs> That's all I can see. That's quite great and fun to know. 
Now, David, I actually want to ask you, as a published author, what sort of advice do you have for other writers who are still struggling with publishing a book like yours? What do you tell people in this category? Yeah, well, when I published on the Sutra, I knew nothing about new print on demand technology. It's revolutionized self publishing. Now, anyone, anyone can get their book printed for just a few dollars, especially you know, Amazon. They, uh, Robert Clark uses them. Mm. And uh, it doesn't cost you, all, all you pay for is the cost of printing the book. You know, the rest. Uh, you, you get up to 70% of the royalties. So Amazon are not greedy about it. Oh. Whereas with uh, Austin McCauley, I got 25%. Oh. And considering I'm helping to promote their book. Um, oh, that's great. I, I've, got, I've got one word of warning for if you, if you choose to go down. It, it, if the viewer here chooses to go down the path of, of self-publishing, uh, don't you know, don't just submit your Word document to, to Amazon KDP. Oh, they'll take it. But their software is very poor, and it will mash it up because all they're concerned about is to produce a book as cheaply as possible, which means very small type and hyphenation. Oh, which gets you know so. Too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it gets you, it gets your book printed cheaper, and technically, well, not technically, yeah, you should make more money out of it. But, Absolutely. Uh, uh, but I, I want my books to have a beautiful visual experience, easy on the eye. Um, so I, I, I just learned how to do it myself. And I advise anyone, you know, use the word Microsoft's Word program, but learn as much as you can about it, because it's far more complex than, than people realize. Uh, you can, for, for instance, you, know, you can set your manuscript to no hyphenation. Right? And when you translate that into a PDF, just send it to KDP, and that instruction will follow through. So they, they cannot hyphenate your print edition. Oh. A lot of people don't know that. You know? I've, I've been put off buying books because it's just a massive you know, crazy hyphenation, not the insensible oh. ones. It also took me years to discover a word, but you can adjust the space in between the letters. So, because but, you know, everybody justifies the typeset so that it fills the page neatly, but sometimes you get these big white gaps. Because you've had too many long words before, and don't too many long words afterwards. But if you, if you use, uh, you know, if you adjust the spacing inside the word, oh, it makes it a far more visual experience. Oh, wow. Uh, Amazing. Word is also excellent for, for producing your ebook. Uh, you, ha you have to produce an index, and, and word is spot on doing that. And very, very helpful. Uh, but to, to turn your um, your PDF into an ebook, I would recommend using Calibre. Now, oh. their, their, their software is free. It does a far better job creating your EPUB files than uh, the free KDP software, which I dumped. You know, it's, it's, uh, Calibre, ace. Congratulations to that guy who created it. Oh, oh, yeah. That's a great one, and it's helping people over there. Yeah. So for viewers who would love to get a copy of David Hort's book, I left a link in the description part of this interview where you can get a copy of his books on Amazon. So thank you very much, David Paul, for accepting the invitation to be featured on P English Literature. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Yeah, it's been a joy. It's a pleasure having you. <laughs> I think we feel the time's not nice. <laughs> 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 That's good.